Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'll lead you step by step through each of the ABRSM theory grades. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets. They're available in US letter or A4 and they accompany each step of this series. There's also a page with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials. And you can also access information about the books that I have available. I've written How to Take Your ABRSM Music Theory Exam. It's an exam technique guide and it's full of tips and techniques on how to best prepare for your exam. And also how to best make use of the time when you're actually in the exam room on exam day. So if you visit SharonBill.com you'll find that it's all there for you. If you can give me a like that would be really great and subscribe to my channel to keep updated. And so we're going to turn now, we're getting to the words, the end of the book now, we're going to turn to page 51 and we're going to be looking just briefly, just have a little chat about the performance directions and also if you turn over the page to page 52 it continues and then we're talking about instruments and voices as well. And so it might be helpful for you also to turn in your PDF document and just turn towards the back and you'll find a few pages and I've referred to those as sections L and M and so we'll be having a little look at that because really this is quite a lot of general knowledge now that you're required to um, accumulate. Of course these performance directions include all of grade one all of grade 2, all of grade 3, all of grade 4 and now also these in grade 5. So you've got um, performance symbols, you've got Italian performance directions, you've got French and now you've got German as well. And so it's all of the previous grades and then all of these terms as well. And my advice to you would be to just revise those and um, collate all of the words that you've got in all of the grades. It does take a good chunk of time, so just a little bit of time. Just keep on with that. Um, and perhaps rather than um, writing them all out and revising them alphabetically, I would group them together and so group all of the grade one, two, three, four, and five terms. Anything to do with, say, for example, slow or peaceful or um, anything that you think fits together, you might group things slightly different than an I. I'd perhaps um, group sad with that as well. Uh, tender and delicate would go with that. Uh, and maybe even colour code it as well. Whatever it takes to just help you to uh, become a little bit more conversant with this great um, amount of performance directions and performance terms. So there's quite a lot there. So it's all of those grades accumulated that now need to be sort of within your grasp. However, do bear in mind that in the new 2018 exam layout, these will be presented to you as multiple choice. So that might be of some help to you. Although I'm not sure that's always a replacement for knowing them because at the end of the day, you might think you know it and then um, a multiple choice could easily confuse you. So there's there's no um, alternative but to do some revision and so I suggest you group them thematically, uh, even colour code them and maybe rope in a little bit of help to um, test you with that with a friend. Uh, at the back of your PDF document, the very last page, when you feel like you've done a bit of revision, you'll see I've given you the opportunity to test yourself. So I've provided you with a little test there, uh, so uh, you can um, have a go and see how you've remembered those. Uh, I would suggest that you just answer them, even if you don't know, take a guess. It's much better to rack your brains and try and remember. It doesn't matter if you get it wrong, you can always rub it out and try again, or print another sheet off and try again. It's always better to learn by your mistakes. So even if you get some wrong, it's better to just have a bit of a guess. So that's the performance directions. Now also we have the topic of instruments and voices. And um, in the grade five book, they just give us this tiny little paragraph that tells us that we need to know the names of the instruments. 
so they'll be most of the instruments of the orchestra, the clefs that those instruments will use, the family groups that these instruments are grouped into, say for example the strings, the woodwind, the reeds, the brass, the double reeds and so on. Uh, and the basic way which they produce sound is also part of that. And they've given you some reading material that you could go to. However, in a sense, this is not an exhaustive list, as you must know, X, Y and Z. It's just collating and gathering some general information, really. And I think, of course, by all means, do read through this, but you can never, ever retain all of that knowledge in one go purely for the purpose of this one exam. Um, I think that would be unrealistic. However, as you're listening to music or as you're reading and just generally researching, I do suggest you just sort of bear in mind little bits and bobs of information as you go along. In an attempt to help you a little bit with that, if you turn back to your PDF document to L and M, you'll see that I've given you the basic range of some of the instruments. And so you'll see I've given you the range of the, the woodwind, flute and piccolo, clarinet, oboe and bassoon, so you can see which are treble, which are bass instruments. I've given you some of the brass instruments. The trumpet is the orchestral brass in the higher register. Cornet is uh, more for brass bands rather than orchestral. And then you've got your bass range as well. And then over the page we've got the strings and they are what will form your string quartet or the string family in the orchestra there. So you can see the range of the strings and again it's not an absolute necessity that you know exhaustively the absolute notes that each of these instruments can play. And also don't forget that these are the extremes of the register, so it wouldn't be wise to be expecting a violinist to be playing in these extremes all the time either. This depends, of course, on the skill of the player as well. Um, and then we've got here the voice re register. So we've got the choral, soprano, alto, tenor, bass, and then the in-between voices as well, the mezzo-soprano and the counter-tenor. So uh, I've just given you a little bit of general knowledge there. However, I don't think it's something you can just sit down and revise all in one go, as you would be able to do with the Italian, French and German terms and also the um, performance symbols. This is more of a general gradual accumulation of knowledge that you will pick up along the way if you just keep your eyes and your ears open and I think you'll also learn a lot by completing the general exercises that will be coming up in the next videos that come at the end of the book and also by going through some past papers as well. So there's a, a lot to be um, taken in in this last section but it's not something that you can do all in one go. I do hope that this PDF document will help you so hopefully these last pages will be a little bit of a help to you to just help you on the way. So I just um, thought I'd give you a little bit of advice here for this last section. I do hope that that's helpful to you. I hope that you've enjoyed working through this. We've got a little bit left to do. If you can give me a like, that'd be really great. And subscribe to my channel to keep updated. There's lots more in store. Please do go to SharonBill.com and make use of the resource available to help you there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.